Hi everyone, it's Rachel, and today we're going to give baths. Now, I've already done two of their baths because I couldn't get the video right, so we're going to give it a shot with Zeus. This is Zeus, my pink eye white. He's about six months old, maybe. Um, I can't really remember. Um, this is his first bath. He's never been in water as far as I know. And he's a very skittish little boy, so <laughs> hopefully this goes pretty well. Um, first, I'm just going to let him run around so I can talk through what I do. Um, and you see there's this tub, and it has some water in it. It's a very small amount of water. It's a little over 20 ounces. I, I don't know the exact specifics I put. Um, I used to use a cup, and I put two cups of water in here but it's not a you know a unit cup it's like a drinking cup and I use this hopefully you can see this without me moving this is the all living things shampoo um, just fresh scent kind of just smells like baby stuff like baby powder ish stuff um, but I use just the smallest amount like literally That's it. Um, and then just kind of rinse the top off in the water. Um, and then I use an, a wash rag and a towel. Um, so I just add the soap to this little bit of water and just kind of suds it up just a smidge, just so it's incorporated pretty well. Now, um, because I use such a small amount of soap, I do not do a rinse. Um, might get some hate for this, but I do not do a rinse because it, they're already agitated because of the water. They really don't like it. They can swim. I've seen them swim, um, but they hate water. They really dislike it. He's very interested in what's about to happen. He's like, what is this? Is this food? See, is this food? Um, so basically, I'm gonna kind of walk you through my handhold method because you can get some pretty bad scratches and I've got a couple here. Um, you can get pretty cut up. He's like, oh, let me get in. Um, but I kind of, I always keep them facing me because that just kind of makes it a little bit easier. And then I, hook my pinky under their chin, my thumb over their head, my ring finger behind their legs, and then these two fingers kind of hold their side. Um, I find this works a lot better for me because they can jump really high. Um, I think like three feet in the air, technically, or over three feet, because I've had a, a play pen that was three foot and they were able to jump, jump out of it. Um, not these guys, but my other boys, and, uh, that really, you just don't want them to jump because they will jump on you. Um, so what I do, let me move this and I'll show you, kind of, <laughs> come here, come here Zeus, come here. My handheld method, I take my pinky here, thumb here, ring finger under his arms, and then I guess one finger is kind of holding his tummy and the other one's down his side. Now with this hand hold, um, it's not very tight. Um, he's kind of wiggling a lot now, but like when they're in the bath, they, they kind of freak out a little bit and I'm not holding very tight at all. I'm just kind of keeping him still and I will loosen it. I will do this, you know. And then sometimes, if I have to, I will do what I call the claw, and I will take my fingers, like spock it out over his neck, and then hook his arms. Um, if you can kind of see what I'm doing. And this is like mainly just to keep him immobile while I clean his tummy or his butt. He did not like that. Um, and then the rag I use for their tail. 
Um, they can, he's pretty clean. He never really has gotten dirty, but he's still pretty young. But their tail can get pretty nasty. So what I like to do is pet their tail with the rag. It has a little bit more abrasiveness than just my hands. And then I'll take the rag and lay their tail over it and then gently rub it like this um, to kind of clean that underside where they kind of run their tail over their urine marks and any old food or poop, that kind of thing. Um, speaking of poop, when you're giving a bat bath to a rat, it is pretty normal for them to poop in their water, um, especially if you're doing it in a bathtub versus this basin because they're uh, scared. They're scared and then, you know, any animal, their first um, reaction when they're scared is to poop and <laughs> the rats are no different. And if he poops on camera, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the editing skills to blur poop. Um, if that grosses you out, just a warning, there might be some feces in this video. Um, it doesn't bother me. I clean their cage. And typically, if you're watching these kind of videos, you have dealt with poop from a rat before. Especially fear poop, which is oh, it's foul. It's very runny. Um, I'm not really sure what mechanism is in place. He's very interested in this tub, but he also can't see very well. Um, he goes around basically by smell and um, his hearing. He kind of freaks out still when I come to the cage because he hasn't caught my scent yet. Um, but since I've had him running around on my bed and, you know, I'm talking, he knows this is me, but he does not know what this is. So we're going to get started. Now, when rats are frightened, they make a squeak noise. Um, this doesn't mean that they're hurting. It's kind of just them talking to you saying, hey, I'm scared. So he may squeak. Um, they can squeal, which is just a very high pitched squeak and it takes a little bit longer to finish. Um, it doesn't mean that they are hurt. It does not mean they are in any pain. It just means that they are uncomfortable. If you hear a rat in pain, you will know the difference because it is very loud and very, like, you know. You can, it's just instinctual. Hey, there's something wrong. But if you just hear a few peeps and little squeaks and everything like that, he's just talking to me, telling me, hey, stop, I don't like this. Why are you doing this to me? So, <laughs> let's, uh, let's. Let's get started, buddy. I know, Zeusy. You're in for a ride. Mwah. Now, Zeus really doesn't need a bath too much. He does have a little bit of um, buildup behind his head. I think from grooming from other, his brothers, um, they get this reddish tinge to their fur when they groom because of porphyrin in their nose and their mucus from their mouth. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much what it is. He is very clear. They all are clear in their nose and eyes. They are not crusty at all. Um, I just wanted to film this and I couldn't with the other boys, so. And he kind of has like that, I don't know how to describe it smell, like the, the smell of a pet rat, if you've had one, not a dirty pet rat, but like a, they need, like, just that you know it's kind of a musky smell but not like a stinky musky smell I don't know um so let's let's do this all right so I do not trim their nails um I don't find it really necessary I don't mind the scratches and because of the children in the house they know that scratching hurts and that um they don't want to bother them because of that now this water has gotten cold now um, so I'm going to try to make this fast for him, but I tend to do it warm. He might not like the water and might make some protesting noises. Let's see how he does. I typically let their feet set in there and then I'll do that like little claw technique and splash some water on their tummy. 
He's doing actually really well. He's probably just like, what in the world? Oh, do you hear him? He's squeaking. And then I will just take a little bit of water and flick it off my hands and wash their face. You don't want to wet their head. You don't want to get water in their ears. And you don't want to try to submerge them. They will not like you very much. So he's not really doing much of anything. If they don't really do a lot of like moving, I don't restrain them with my hands. Um, because it's just very frustrating for them. And I will, if you can even see him, I really don't know if you can see what is going on right here. Um, when they start to do a lot of protesting and like running away from me, that's when I incorporate my hold. And there we go. And now I just take my rag and I wet it. Squeeze off a lot of the excess. You just want it dampened. And then I'm just going to brush him with it. I don't want to do a lot. See, he pooped. Sorry. He pooped. He's, he's like, what in the world are you doing? Now, you can um, completely remove the poop. It's just the way the bed is tilting from me sitting. It is not floating in the water. Oh, well, now it is. Um, and just kind of brush it off. This <laughs> people are going to be like, oh my god, gross. There's poop and she's touched it. I'm sure everyone at one point has touched poop. And you see I'm cleaning his tail. I'm basically just cupping his tail in the rag and just not adding really any pressure. I'm just holding it loosely like he's able to move his hand, his tail out of my hand freely. I'm just using the wash rag as just a little bit of extra abr abrasiveness to the wash. And you see there's no bubbles. I don't really use soap to suds. I just kind of use it as like because it does have some cleaning properties. Of course it's soap. Um, but I don't want to remove a lot of their natural oils. And I'll just wash his little mouth and nose area and his forehead. He kind of likes this part. So it feels like a tongue to him, I guess. And just kind of wash him. Wash his little toesies. His tum tum. And then that's it. I mean, I'm not going to go in depth. They clean themselves like a cat. I'm not going to go crazy trying to clean him. And then I immediately take the towel and cup over my hand and then ugh, wrap him up. He may poop when you pick him up because you've exposed his butt to the air and then I just kind of hold them and it kind of helps to cover their heads a little bit. They will try to crawl up the towel because they have that ability to hook to the towel with their nails and climb and I just kind of like dry them. Um, now you are going to want to keep the room that they are in after bath time very warm because you don't want them to get cold and then get sick. Um, I have a heater going on high in my bedroom because that's where their cage is. So it's a little warm in here for me, but it also reduces the risk that they get sick. Um, so I don't mind being a little bit uncomfortable to prevent them from being sick. And you see he's kind of just burrowing in the towel and that kind of helps with drying him off because you can kind of just rub his fur gently um, without him squirming away a lot. Um, and then like I just take his towel, uh, tail and just do the same thing I did when I was washing it. I cup it. And this kind of helps because they can develop a little bit of buildup of keratin um, on their scales of their tail. And it kind of helps to remove some of that buildup. One of the boy's tails was really bad because he's just lazy and he won't clean himself. So I probably need to do his bath a little bit more. He's got a little bit of built up uh, keratin at the tip. So I just kind of run the towel over his tail and it is gone. Um, if it gets really bad, it can be very difficult. 
but I don't recommend going extremely hard on their tail. Um, I have in the past used a toothbrush that's just very tedious and it takes a while to actually do so the longer it takes the more stressed out they become and you know you just you're you're making things difficult for yourself I recommend if they do have a lot of buildup on their tail do baths pretty frequently probably a couple of times a week till the buildup is reduced to a more manageable thing and then I would do like once a month until it is gone and as you can see he's already finishing up the bath himself um, with his cleaning he he's just a little cutie he's just a little cutie and the bath in, in general is not to make them smell better um, it's just to kind of remove some of their dead skin, um, they're just kind of cage built, uh, and you know, he's perfectly content now. It took just a few minutes in the water. The soap is such a minimal amount in the water, I'm not going to rinse because that's just a lot of excess and, um, I don't think it's gonna harm them probably a bad thing to say I don't think but it says that it is you know safe uh, it says rinse thoroughly um, but I'm using it more as a dip and wash than anything there is no smell of the soap on him he just kind of smells musky still like I said, the bath is not about thorough cleaning because he will do that himself once he gets wet. And technically, you don't even need the soap. I just have it. I bought this a while ago, honestly. I think on an old video, I had this in a haul and I used this probably once every six months after I bought it. And like I said, this is the first bath that these three have ever had and I've had two of them since... July? June? June. Yes, since June. <laughs> wow. And, um, like I said, he's just, you know, chilling. He looks a little bit more fluffy now because his hair is all raised because he's like, quit touching me. You put me in the water and then you squirt my body and I don't like you no more. Stop. Um, after this point, they kind of just will clean themselves. Um, to dry themselves because they've got the water on them and they just don't want it on there and um, Yeah, I mean he's Look at him. He's like stop <laughs> um, But this is Zeusy <laughs> After the bath he might look a little bit wider because you've removed some of his um, You know dirt from his fur he may even look a little bit wider because they do scent mark on each other and scent mark is essentially urine and is sometimes yellow and the water may look a little dingy because of that and they may look whiter because it's been removed um, maybe I can show you the water you might be able to see the water he has pooped there's two little poopies floating in there I will pour this water down the toilet and flush it and it will be as if it never happened um, like I said I cannot edit out or blur poop because I don't have the editing skills, but that is the method that I have used successfully over the past four years of owning rats, and even before that, I would essentially do the same thing just in a bathtub on a much grander scale. I would add a little bit more soap than what I've done to this little bucket. This is just easier, it's more convenient, and makes the job just go by a little bit faster. Now he is a little bit cold because of the water and he's not over by the heater. So I will go ahead and end this video and put him back in his cage with his brothers. Ow! Um, so that he can finish cleaning himself, cleaning himself and you know, yeah.
Bye, guys.